This video is dedicated to developing an understanding of the properties and applications of a learning theory commonly known as connectivism. Our world has become more connected on a global scale than ever before in human history. This change coincides with the invention and availability of the internet. In its origins, the internet was a network for sharing data and software among scientists. As a result of the development of more user-friendly technology over the past few decades, Many people now have the capacity to distribute their own ideas and works throughout the World Wide Web. Information is now available and shared at a rate that is virtually impossible for any one person or group to keep up with. This change has spawned a new learning theory called connectivism. Connectivism is the thesis that knowledge is distributed across a network of connections through the use of technology. Thus, learning consists of the ability to construct and transverse through these networks of connections. Those who study this theory believe it is important to treat knowledge and learning as a formation of connections. This theory has been developed and explored by Dr. George Siemens and his associate Stephen Downs. According to Siemens, learning should not be based solely on what we know, but also on our ability to share that knowledge with others. So what are the major principles of connectivism? The first is the idea that learning and knowledge rests in the diversity of opinions. We have a diverse set of connections in our lives that advocates of connectivism often call nodes. Nodes may be anything from a person to a video to a radio, as long as it is a source of communication in our lives. The second principle of connectivism states that learning is a process of connecting information sources. What we learn and what we know comes from the connections we form between neurons in our brain. There are about 10 trillion connections between neurons which make up everything we know, believe, and imagine. Connectivists believe that this type of connections can also be made through technology and the world we live in. Another concept of connectivism is the idea that knowledge may exist in non-human appliances. This is a controversial perspective of knowledge, but advocates of connectivism claim that the content we learn is ever-changing and technologies such as videos, websites, blogs, and social networks now serve as a pipeline for the flow of this information and its storage. For connectivists, the capacity to know more is more critical than what is currently known. Thus, the process is more important than any content participants in any course may obtain throughout this process. At its very best, content is an abstraction of the complex set of practices, attitudes, and beliefs of the people within any given network. A process that is essential for this learning theory is the nurturing and maintaining of connections. This process is often called aggregation. It is very important for the members of a network to continue to bring together and distribute fresh content and materials for others to access. Then learners may pursue whichever content that pertains to their own personal needs. A necessary skill for this process to flourish is the ability to see connections between ideas, fields, and concepts. Technology has made this process much easier. Blogs and online bookmarking tools have given us an organized method of grouping content. In addition, social networks have allowed us to discuss this information more quickly and freely. This is often called remixing. Remixing allows us to have the most accurate and up-to-date knowledge for learning activities. Now learners may create something new without completely starting from scratch. This concept of repurposing allows learners to be involved in the creative process without simply repeating or filtering that which others have already said or done. Connectivists have a very different perspective on learning than the currently very structured public education system. They feel that if we focus solely on the content of a discipline, we are missing out on much of the learning process. Those who are truly immersed in the community of practitioners, such as doctors or physicists, are introduced to the characteristics and practices of other members of that networked community. The continuous development of social networks is essential to the theory of connectivism. The following are some of the most popular networks available on the internet today. For connectivists, learning is very personal and is an ever-changing process. It's not something that can be simply packaged neatly in a sentence and passed on as a finished product. By sharing viewpoints to explore ideas completely, learners will develop a thorough knowledge of any given topic. To flourish in the digital age, corporate training and public education may have to change and adjust to several of these principles. Critics of connectivism say that it is untested as a learning theory and it is very similar to some of the other learning theories out there. There is also a concern about learning existing within appliances.
No matter what you believe, connectivism does provide an interesting perspective of learning in the digital age. What does your personal learning network look like? For more information on connectivism, check out the links below. Thanks for watching and best of luck.